time for a story time and Sister Julia. Donovan pointed out that I'm matching. <laughs> my microphone's matching my shirt. Um, good morning and happy Sabbath. Sabbath. And um, I want to start by saying this is the first time I'm telling this story. So let's pray <laughs> for me about that. And um, just say a real quick little prayer before we start. Can we bow our heads? Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this time here on this beautiful Sabbath day. Thank you for the stories that are in your holy word and that we can share those. We ask you for grace and mercy all day, all week. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, so this story is about a movie that's one of my favorite movies. And I don't know about you, but the movies that are coming out nowadays are kind of not so good. So this is a movie that came out in 1960, even before I was born. It's that old. And it came out in 1960. It's set in the very early 1900s when cars were just coming out. So people still had horse and buggy and some people had cars. So that's the movie. The name of the movie is Pollyanna. Has anybody heard of Pollyanna or seen it? Anybody? Pollyanna. So what happens, this little girl, she's probably, I'm guessing, maybe about 11, 10 or 11, and she's orphaned. Her father was a minister and her mom and dad, something happens, she's orphaned, and she goes to live with her aunt, who was her mom's sister, and her aunt is very, very wealthy. She, in fact, owns almost everything in the whole town. That's how much money her aunt has. The town is even named after the aunt, her last name is Harrington. The name of the town is Harrington. So this little orphan girl goes to live with her very wealthy aunt. And again, her parents, her dad was a minister, so they didn't have a lot of money. So when she gets there and she meets her aunt for the first time, she has this little dress on that came in the mission barrels because her parents were missionaries. And her aunt just kind of looks at that like, where did you get that dress? And she is still very happy and excited, even with the circumstances and the things that are happening. And um, her aunt tells her that she's going to take her to the store and buy her a whole new wardrobe. Wouldn't that be fun to go to the store and just get all new stuff? And she was so excited. She said, store-bought clothes? Like she had never had anything that came from the store. So she was really excited about that. But she learns that her aunt is kind of stern, a little bit serious. She's not full of a whole lot of love and joy. And she kind of finds out that her aunt sort of controls the whole town. And the whole town is a little bit grumpy, to be honest. They're all kind of cranky and grumpy. And just everybody has just some complaints and they're just, you know, and she tells them about a game that her dad used to play with her called the Glad Game. And it's when something happens, some situation, you have to find out a way to be glad about it. So she had requested a little dolly in the mission barrels when they were missionaries. And when the mission barrels came, she got a set of crutches instead of a dolly. They must have confused it. And so they decided to play the glad game and figure out what could she be happy about with the crutches. You may think of what, what would you be happy about getting crutches instead of a doll? That you got something at least? That's, that's a perfect way to be glad. They were glad because she didn't have to use the crutches. She didn't need them. So she goes around town and meets everybody. It's a small little town, but she starts meeting everybody and she's spreading her cheer and her love and her joy and her gladness and teaching people how to be happy instead of 
frowning and complaining and just waiting to die. She wanted people to be happy. Well, it turns out that one of the things that was in this movie, in fact, it's one of my favorite scenes in the movie, the aunt, who was kind of controlling and sort of owned the town, was telling the preacher every week what his sermon was supposed to be. And one day, they were all talking and kind of complaining about this, and Pollyanna was there, and Pollyanna said, well, she doesn't own the church. And all the adults went, huh, you're right. So nobody kind of did anything at this point, but one day, Aunt Polly, which was Pollyanna's aunt, sent her with a note to go out where the preacher was practicing his sermon for the week and tell him what he needed to preach. So she took the note, and she started talking to the preacher. And she said, because, you know, her dad was a preacher as well. And so she said that her dad had given her this little locket. And on the locket, there was a saying, and it said, if you look for the bad in mankind, hoping to find it, you surely will. And so that, the preacher just kind of went, ding, a light bulb went off. And he thought, oh, I don't need to be doing these sermons. I need to be preaching the word of God. And she told him that her and her father, in playing the glad game, remember we talked about the glad game? That they went through the Bible and decided to find all the happy texts, the glad texts. And she said that there were 800 texts in the Bible just about rejoice and glad and happiness. And the next day, they show the preacher preaching his sermon, and he said he told the story about her coming out there and that she said there were 800 glad tests. He said, in fact, there are 826. He said, I know, because I stayed up all night looking for them. And so he said that 52 weeks in a year, it would take 16 years to go through a sermon a week about just the glad text in the Bible. I want to share with you my favorite text in the Bible, which happens to be one of the glad texts, and it's in 1 Thessalonians 5, and it's verse 16. <coughs> Do you want to read it? It's real simple. Yes. So I thought what might kind of be fun is if maybe every week when we're at home, we can look or search for at least one glad text every week. And then when we come to church on Sabbath, we can all talk about which glad text we found. Does that sound like fun? Maybe one, just one day a week, find one happy text, something that says rejoice or be happy or something about being happy. You think we could do that? Yeah. Amen. So, would somebody like to close with a little prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of another opportunity for us to have a Sabbath day. May you help us to be glad and rejoice in everything that we do. And I hope us to have a great Sabbath. Amen.